This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 152 of Healthy Critters Radio on the Horse Radio Network. Healthy Critters Radio is brought to you by Biostar US. Find them online at biostarus.com. On today's show, we talk with JJ Tate, a prominent dressage FEI rider and trainer. Listen in. <laughs> I'm Tigger. And I'm not Patty. I am Coach Jen, however. We we booted Patty out early today, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> Tigger and Patty, both dressage enthusiasts, Patty being a professional rider and trainer, Tigger being a, perf- a former, former competitor, and now the chief cook, bottle washer, and scientist at Biostar US. You guys are both in Wellington, which is someplace you go every winter. Because yep. that's the place to be in the dressage universe in the winter. Yes. And Patty took off early this evening because she had to go to, to the five star. The five star. So for non dressage enthusiasts, what is the five star? That's the highest level of competition internationally. In dressage, I know in 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 various and sundry disciplines within a sport if you want to get to five star which is applied universally to all olympic equestrian disciplines the the star system Mm -hmm. how does one qualify to get to a five star level do you have to get i think you have to to have a world ranking a world ooh, that sounds scary it sounds expensive Um. <laughs> well, if you compete in some two stars or three stars and you place, that's going to give you a ranking. Uh, so the ranking is dependent on place, place and money won. score. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I never, huh, cool. So we are how many, about how many weeks into the season at this point <sighs> as we record? 500. <laughs> <laughs> We are about almost, we're or a little over halfway through. A little over halfway through. And how is the season going thus far for Tigger and Biostar? It's going great. It's intense as it always is. Um, but it's very, very busy, as you might imagine. Yeah, yeah. Because are there a fair number of clients that you get to see every year, but you only get to see them when they're in Wellington. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of them jumper clients. Really? How interesting. Yeah. Sometime we'll have to have a chat with one of them. Oh, yes. There is a universe. See, and then that's something unique about Wellington for non Wellington folks. Wellington is ge- a generic term for the competition. Winter equestrian festival, the winter equestrian festival. But they have show jumping, they have dressage, and do they have polo? Hun- oh, they polo have hunters, yes. And hunters. And it's very urban there. There's no green pastures. Very and, urban. Yeah. It is an intense place. All you have to do is show up and you can feel it in the air. It's yeah. very electric that way. Yeah. Um, and it's very beautiful. I mean, in a uh, if you wanted to, to make Disneyland for equestrians... Mm-hmm. Wellington is kind of you know the what it made me think of. World. It made me think of Country Club Beautiful. It's all very neat and oh, proper and prim neat, and trimmed, tiny, tidy. Yeah, and yeah, I, I mean it's beautiful on that level. It's absolute. Some of the farms are just mind blowingly beautiful. The barns are better than my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also the level of competition is probably the highest of any place in the u.s now maybe california is on the same yeah they, yeah because they, they have their winter same. circuit too now do, yeah. does wellington get a high number of international competitors 700 horses came over from europe for wef wow biggest amount yep 700 Don, 700 Don. wow well our guest today jj tate also in wellington 
is going to be talking a lot about what's going on down there and what's going to be going on down there and what's been going on in her life. Rather inspiring, I think you'll find it. So without further ado, let's welcome JJ to the show. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have as a guest on this episode, JJ Tate. She is a well-known dressage rider and trainer, and she has been on a very uh, profound journey in 2021, I guess in, into into now as well, um, and very open about um, her dealing with breast cancer. And JJ, I, I know I've commended you before, but I'm going to commend you on air for the courage it takes to be so honest about that particular journey. Um, it's raw and even thinking about it gets me teary. Sorry. Um, That's okay. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I think you have, you have helped more people than you know, and will continue to do so. So um, in light of that, um, the reason, one of the many reasons that I wanted to have JJ on Healthy Critters is because um, I, I was so affected by the Winter Olympics in terms of the snowboarders and freestylers and their camaraderie, hugging even when they didn't win, hugging somebody else who won and, you know, rooting for everybody to have a good go. And I was texting JJ and and. I don't want to put words in your mouth, JJ, but we are all of the same opinion that if there's an area that we all could help this sport and maybe equestrian sports in general is compassion and empathy and understanding that every rider has their own journey and it's not perfect and it has ups and downs and it has a lot of disappointments and a lot of tears, but we've got to stop judging each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm climbing off my soapbox. I I love your soapbox, Tigger, and uh, <laughs> you know, thank, thank you for your kind words about my uh, breast cancer journey, and uh, profound is a perfect word for it. Um, it is earth-shattering and life-changing, and... Um, a powerful, incredible experience that I am honestly feel really blessed to have had and have, you know, I really changed my perspective of like, Oh, you're a breast cancer survivor. Like it's a past tense thing. Like you did it and now you're done doing it. And like, for me, it's been this like daily make good choices, make good decisions and live my best life every single minute. Uh, mm -hmm. that I get the choice to, you know, and so that's really had a profound change on me and uh, my outlook on life. And uh, thank you so much for the positive um, words um, on that. And that's also a little bit about like why, you know, I've been very open about it because I have always lived my life and had the feeling that the more you sort of bring something out into the air, you kind of give it less power. You know, I mm -hmm. think when we talk about depression or anxiety or fear or <clears throat> regret or like whatever, forgiveness, you know, anger, like that really made me mad, you know, like whatever those deep emotions are, I feel like we shine a little light on it and lift it up into the breeze and it will burden you less. You know, that's definitely how I grew up. And we spoke about everything. We're a very open sharing family and we all know what's going on with each other and we openly discuss stuff. And um, I'm delighted to, you know, have the opportunity to make, you know, other people feel comfortable to share their vulnerability as well, because, and as you were talking about what we kind of need a little bit more in this sport, you know, the word humility came to mind, mm -hmm. you know, it's so much about, uh, what you were talking about, the Winter Olympics, like, it's really hard what we all do, you know, as athletes. Yeah. And of course, you know, the snowboard, you know, doesn't have spooky moments and lamenesses and problems, <laughs> you know, like our horses do. So that makes it probably a, a tiny bit easier. <laughs> but then again, you know, the half pipe looks pretty scary, <laughs> you know, and that looks pretty intense, you know, and 
I always remember um, I've coached Allison Springer quite a bit at Rolex and I will never forget, you know, like we would do the dressage and that was always super exciting. But like the big buildup was always Saturday, you know, the cross country -country. and I was blown away by everyone in the stable area. Everyone came back and they're like, Hey man, you know, be careful about, you know, jump number 12. It's getting a little sticky out there. You think you want this distance, but make sure you ride more forward to it than you think. Like all these riders were like helping each other do their best. And I thought, wow, I'm so inspired by that, that all these top riders on this top, top level all wanted everyone to finish. Everyone wanted to have their best go for their stable mate or their person across the hallway. You know, I remember um, Mary King got back and Allison was like, hey, Mary, tell me something good. It was like pouring down rain, right? It was like horrible weather. And, you know, Mary shared how it was running, you know, and of course every hour, it can change because of the footing and the ground and the rain and whatever. But I was really moved by this sense of camaraderie and togetherness. And I, you know, really thought about that. Like, why is that? Is that because, you know, you could maybe go out to the course and like not make it back because it's actually super dangerous. And like, because (laughs) we don't have that high level of like danger aspect. Like, is that why we all kind of to ourselves or is it this, you know, dressage is so like tight upper lip and don't show your feelings. And, you know, you need to be elegant and beautiful. And so don't you know, I show any emotion. Dressage is a lot like figure skating in this Olympics. That's what really yes. stood out to me was it was way less like snowboarding in terms, not in terms of the danger, but more of the joy. Those snowboarders yes. were having great time the freestyle skiers yeah. their jumps and their flips i mean and they were just like okay i'll be to try this and see if this run i get a better score i'm like wow what a great attitude. yeah yeah um, and we're much more like know, the skaters i agree but you know what nathan chen has said in his interview on the today show he was like you know i really focused on being focused in the present and enjoying every minute I had at the Olympics. That's and like awesome. four years ago at the Olympics before, I think he maybe like had a fall or it didn't go yeah, great short or whatever. Yeah, program did not and then, go well. And like this year, he was unbelievable. And unbelievable. it was funny because he talked about performing from that place of joy and that being totally present in the now and really experience and allowing himself to experience the joy of the Olympics of like, wow, I did the hard part. Like I got here. Like yeah. now I need to enjoy and soak in every moment. And that actually brought something special and actually unbeatable into his performance. And I thought the same thing. I thought, wow, like we all need to take a little note, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. from that of like, of course we're going to be a little nervous and we never really reach our best performance if we're not nervous. Um, it kind of brings the adrenaline up and, you know, kind of spikes your brain into like, you feel a little bit, you know, everything, the sensations all come a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So it's important that that happens, but yeah, you know, to kind of like keep that piece of like human humanity and being human, um, and not like just plastic and, you know, we practice so often like our patterns and our our tests and it's like, it's called a test, which actually already brings tension into it. You know, <laughs> yeah, everyone's judging you, uh, you know, and it's like, we all do it because we love horses yeah. and we all know what everyone else has struggled and gone through and sacrificed. And I mean, blood, sweat and tears and money, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just like this, this, you know, um, connectivity needs to kind of come a little bit more, Um, to the forefront and you know it's kind of interesting I think at the top top sport I see it actually a lot more yeah than like in the in the middle tier like regionally I feel like there's a lot more like don't don't take a lesson from that trainer yeah these are my people don't don't share yeah or standing um, by the rail and seeing everything in this ultra critical light totally totally (laughs) 
And I feel like just like the people at Rolex are at the top of the, you know, top of the echelon of the sport, yeah. like so many people down here in Wellington. And we have a little WhatsApp group called the friends and it's Olympic riders, world equestrian game riders, and like all the top trainers in North America. And like, we all kind of came together because we needed actually a place to like, Hey guys, you know, what do you think is the best girth? You know? And like, we can Mm -hmm. just openly ask questions and it's been such a beautiful. That's really cool. That exact thing that like, we need support. Right. I mean, um, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of, um, stress and we're, we're all gunning for the same stuff, but like really at the top of the sport, it's really, we're all very close and we're all very, um, compassionate about everyone else's journey. And it's like really full of respect. And I think like if we can help that trickle down to everyone, like, uh, you know, the national trainers and the regional trainers and the young riders and that like, we're all in the same boat and we all began this journey with horses because we, we love that and we love the challenge it brings to ourselves to like better ourselves. And part of that is to show, you know, humankind, uh, more compassion, you know, and it was interesting that saying that out loud reminds me of the podcast I did with Stefan Peters last year. And he was like, be human and be kind. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I love that, you know, <laughs> and it's so true. And here's like the top guy of our sport telling yep. us to be like better people, you know, and that's so important. And I think we have a tendency in a question, but I'll focus on dressage to be more compassionate and kind towards our horses yep. than we are to our fellow stable mates and, um, competitors and to ourselves uh, yes. yeah and and i think that you know also to ourselves you know i think about like my health changes i've made you know i finally have put my own self in the same category i've put my horses right like my horses want for nothing right oh you need a massage oh you need a massage like every other week like okay oh ooh, new shoes like I can't even tell you the last time I got a pair of $400 shoes, (laughs) right? And that's like every four weeks, you know, and it's like, oh, oh, you need a new, new bandages or uh, whatever, like Theraplate, you know, whatever, the blankets, we got like, you know, the Pro Series 3 out there, you know, there's a magnetic blanket and the Beamer, everyone's got this stuff, right? And we're just like, and we go home and eat ramen noodles with a Coke. (laughs) You know, and it's just like horrible, you know, and I, I think that lack of self care and sort of like not respecting ourselves enough also kind of dribbles into how we treat other people too. A hundred percent. And we can all kind of raise our game in like. And maybe it just begins with ourselves with, you know, having compassion for your own humanness. You know, you're not supposed to be perfect. And patience. Right. And like patience. The horses are such a good teacher of patience. Man, they are the masters. Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, my God. Right. Like, I'm still, I was just laughing this morning, actually, because I was like, I've got a sprightly young horse. And I'm just like, relax, damn it. And it's like, okay, that like never works. But I somehow (laughs) keep coming back around to that. You know, (laughs) I'm like. God, am I ever going to get patient enough, you know? And I'm just like, this is an exercise in self-control of myself. Like, we call it riding horses, but it's actually like, uh, you know, like, get a handle of yourself, you know? So how do you pass this on to your students? Do you, I mean, I know you have Team Tate Academy, which I recommend our listeners, you know, find on Google, join. Um, It's a fantastic a way to engage with JJ and learn her insights and the insights from other riders all over the world. It's a great sharing place, an honest place, a safe place. And you also get a lot of good training and uh, riding support. Um, but yeah. how do we get right. that, that compassion, kindness to oneself and therefore your fellow riders do you do that? Yeah, in I mean, Team Tate, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like we do that. Like I would say, like I have 
Team Take TV on Facebook, which is where I go live every Wednesday at seven o'clock and I call it Wine About It. Wine About It Wednesdays. And that was um, back when I was drinking alcohol. <laughs> I would have a toast to something. I would have a toast to some kind of growth, right? It was like, we weren't going to whine and complain, but we were going to like have a toast to frustration is normal and imperfection right. is normal and growth is hard. And let's just open it up and talk about it, you know, and become, you know, um, Jane, who owns the barn here in Florida, she's like, you know what you are, you're like comfortably vulnerable or confidently vulnerable. And I'm like, that's really interesting that Boy, that's the that word that came up, you know, because I, I am just because it's like it's the human condition to struggle. And yeah. it's a secret if someone's like, I don't have that struggle. You know, like, I don't think I look fat in my white pants. Okay, well, most of us do, right? Or <laughs> am I good enough to be in this class with these people? You know, like, yeah. am I ready to go to this show? You know, and I do think we get highly critical of others when we and ourselves don't feel good enough. Yeah. You know, and that's something to like everyone, I suggest, like unpack that a little bit of like, mm -hmm. where might you be responding or better yet reacting in yourself to be unkind to others because you actually, that represents something inside yourself that you're yep. unhappy with. So it's so much easier to be like, oh, well, she's like this or he did that. And that, that actually in myself annoys me about myself. And so therefore like, I mirror it. I see it in someone else, but like, what does that tell me about me? You know? And I, yep. I, that's you know, very I talk insightful. about that stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I talk to my girls, uh, my, my, all my students, uh, the other trainers I mentor. Um, I do talk about it in the team Tate Academy, which is something different from the Facebook group. But um, for us, like we really wanted to create a like-minded community. Like you said, like a really safe space to like delve into everything. You know, you get a weekly video of me riding with a microphone. It's 10 to 15 minutes, very short to the point of like, let's dissect how to do rain back. How do you teach rain back? What are the aids? You know, how about shoulder in, you know, um, exercises you can do to prepare for flying changes. Like we do like these training videos every week. But then we wow. also have these like Zoom lectures. Um, we also have an interactive um, tack room chat that you can ask your questions. We talk about how to manage clients. We talk about how to manage our emotions at horse shows. We talk about how to, you know, ride a shoulder in too. I want to know really how important. you juggle all this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really wonderful support network, you know. Um, but it's a lot of practice, you know, I mean, it was really funny, like COVID hit and I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't teach clinics. I can't go see all my people like everywhere and support them. And I, I love the idea of team, you know, that's why my business is team. That's why it's a team paid Academy. Like I love the idea of belonging to a group mm -hmm. of people who celebrate the horse and grow in ourselves the same way, you know, and so, you know, it kind of, we couldn't travel. So I said to my husband, Richard, I'm like, why don't you pick up that, you know, pick up that iPhone and let's video. And I, I used to do it for my clients when they couldn't come and visit. I would ride with a mic and, you know, explain what I'm doing and how the horse is doing and how it looks different from last time. And, oh, there you saw him react this way. And I just like talked them through it. And they like, they loved it. And I'm like, well, hmm, maybe I could just ride my own horses and help people train their horses at home. And in the meantime, create this like-minded community where people feel safe to share the struggles because I have been in my own arena in Wisconsin, face in my hand, in my gloves, in my hand, you know, like crying in the middle of my arena, like I suck. I can't get this. I'm letting this horse down. Like, am I ever going to get good? You know? And it was like, Ugh, it was so frustrating, you know, and it's like the best thing like Brene Brown talks about one of the best things we need to remember is that it's totally normal. Like we've got to normalize that mm -hmm. frustration, mm -hmm. disappointment or sadness when they're, when they're lame. How, you know, I just did a lecture in the Academy last month about staying motivated when things like aren't great 
right? It's like, yep. it kind of started like, how to stay inspired when it's freezing cold and you, don't, you can't ride or like whatever, or like the horse is lame and you got like six months of hand walking to do or oh, whatever, yeah. you know, it's like, it's hard to keep your spirits up. But the thing is like, if you've been in this long enough, you've had that experience. Yep. You've been faced with, you know, put, having to put a horse down or how yep. you handle, um, you know, whatever. And I've got a lot of episodes on my podcast too, which I'm going to interview you for exactly. Um, <laughs> because people don't talk about it enough. Everyone just no. like, you know, kind of just sweeps it away. And it's like, we've got to honor those feelings or they mm-hmm. get a little bit bigger or you harbor them and they meld into something different, which does not serve you, you know, At like all. during um, my post cancer life, you know, I would say it, it is like, you know, before cancer and after cancer, you know, so like AC for me, which is kind of, you're never really away from it. Totally. It's like a daily right. discipline of le- living well, you know, but it's like, uh, you know, we kind of just ignore a lot of things and you just kind of like speed by it or, you know, like, Oh, that's not that important. And it's like little things over time build up, you know, and we've got to have really worked on like letting things go and don't sweat the small stuff, you know, like all those stupid little cliche things that you I refer about, to like, it as my steamer trunk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> that I have to occasionally go and clean out the steamer trunk and, and I do it with ceremony. You know, it's a, it's a real I act. like that. And I'm yes. big on fire. So I give it. I was just going to ask you that. I can't believe you said that. I was like, <laughs> would this happen to be, do you burn anything during I this? I do. Like, I love that. If that is so, I, I've got a pile at home. Uh, including my, me- my my medical bra, which I'm not sure how that's going to burn. But, you know, it wouldn't be the first time people burn some bras. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I take the ashes and I put them in a hole and plant something. A plant. A tree. Ooh, a bush. Nice. So that I like that. Mother Earth converts it into something yeah. beautiful and beautiful. beneficial. Yeah. Yeah, but I love that. Really important to me. It's one thing to think it mm-hmm. and say yeah. it, but man, you write it down, you ball it up, and you hit it in and the fire. Burn. Yeah. It's, yep. It's, it's, uh-huh. it's, I'm getting the chills with you talking about that. I agree <laughs> 100%. That is a powerful ritual. And it's like, I've really worked on like, you know, letting things go. Like I've changed my diet radically. I've changed my, I'm working on changing my thoughts because of course that's hard. That's the hard, <laughs> you know, but it's oh my also God. like, it's ongoing. Oh my God. It's, it's just, ongoing. Like yeah, e- forever, yeah. you know, but it's also like letting go of things that don't really serve you, you know, and I, and recognize what that those idea. are because I, I think that's kind of a, a tricky part, which the horses and the dogs have mastered. They are true 100%. masters in letting go and not hanging yep. on to stuff. And we have so much to learn from them in that yep. regard. They don't get caught yep. up in the foolishness. Well, and just the, I call it the white noise. Yep. You know, like the the static in the line. They just don't, no. they just see it clear and mm-hmm. they accept it fully and they, they let it go and move on. Yep. As sad as something can be, like we actually, um, one of my clients just, she has two dogs and she just lost one of them, Ugh. um, to like a weird random, um, uh, tumor near her spinal cord. So it was like a shock. Right. And Ugh. so within like days, it was like, you know, she's not okay. And the other, like, we were just talking about like how the other dog, like knew it was time and knew it was happening. And just accepted it and it was like totally terrible and like sad but it was like beautiful in the way that the other dog who lived just accepted this fully and knew what was happening and they, they just they just they know yeah they and know it's just we could just learn so much of 
that, you know? I, I, my, my oldest dog now had a best friend who is another Aussie and he unfortunately had a brain tumor. So we had to put him down and yeah. I brought Kimasabi with, with spirit, who is the one that had to be put down and brought them into the, you know, into the vet's office and they were both lying down and, you know, we know the whole drill on and right. Kimasabi was lying right next to his best friend. Yeah. The moment the spirit left spirit's body, Kimasabi sat up, turned around, and would not look at him. And oh, my goes, God. Oh, my gosh. I said, well, he knows wow. he's not there. Yeah. That's just a body. Yeah. That's, that's not his friend. And, and right. I was so thankful for that gift. Yep. So incredibly thankful for what Kimasabi showed me. To witness, right, exactly, yeah. to witness that experience yeah. of like, okay, he's not there. Yeah. And we will remember him and love him and hold him in our heart forever. And that's where he's going to be but, living. He's going to live in our heart. Uh, he lives on in our heart and our exactly. memories. But he's and not love, in which that is body. like everywhere. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's powerful. That gave me the chills. <laughs> I mean, sad, right? Like, and it's and it's important to mourn and yes. be sad and recognize yes. the sadness. Absolutely. And, and honor honor the sadness because you honor the life, you know, that they had while they were here this time, you know. Um, but then it's important, you know. To celebrate their exactly. freedom as well. They're, 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 yeah. you know, nothing ever dies. It just changes form. And exactly. I, I love that about living is that we're, it's temporary. The body is temporal, you know, it's a vessel. It's, it's a, vessel. a vessel. And I'm, I'm looking our... forward to my new one. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, can we, can we vote uh, while we come back as, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's just like light energy and love, you know, yeah. when you really feel that and see that in everything and everyone, I mean, some people call it like seeing God and everything or the universe or uh, the great divine, you know, I've gotten a lot of energy work uh, after my cancer diagnosis and it is powerful thing. Powerful. Powerful thing. That's what I love powerful about Star beyond Wars. Measure. I, the force to me is an absolute truth. It is the I light. That. That's what the force is. I love that. That's why I'm such a Star Wars fanatic. Um, <laughs> I totally well, get that, though. I love that. Yeah. I would like to imagine myself as a as a Jedi in training. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly right. I mean, we're put kind of on this earth to have these earthly experiences and to grow and be in training yeah. to become better and yeah. to be a better example. And sh like you think about these incredible people, um, the Dalai Lama or like other oh, monks yeah. or like you know, or whoever sure. in your life, really great. Yeah, exactly. Healers. And, and you don't know their mean, names and they, they don't, you know, they, there's not a lot of fanfare around them, but boy, when you meet a true healer, it's mind yeah. blown. And it like, their humility, their like, humility. Yes. And, and kindness and love, you know, yep. and joy. Yeah. And that's what's like, we have to bring that, you know, it's, I know we all get like really focused on the goal and the achieving of something, but it's also like thinking about what, what is the feeling you are looking for, you know, by achieving that goal, you know, and I so ask many myself, times where is the of, light? Where's the light? Yes. Yes. I love that. And, and like what, what in love is this for? You yeah. Know? And so, like, for me, like, love for my other competitors and, like, love for my horses, I want to honor their love for their horse, mm -hmm. you know, and, 
that's so much also about um, being patient with other people too. You know, it's like you sometimes see, you know, like when you think about like, well, how can I be compassionate about that guy? When he <laughs> rides like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yes. I, I've, I've certainly have said that to myself in the past. Oh, me, you know, oh, like, me too. More times right? than I but care to But then that's like the challenge of like, love him anyway. Mm-hmm. Love him anyway. And, and love uh, his difficulties he's had in his life that has led him to act like that and, 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 you know, pray for him that he can find a better way to be, you know? And, but that is also just like, you know, like just acceptance, you know? Yes. That's huge. Yep. And an acceptance of self, you know? Yeah. We're not perfect. No, we're, and no one's and that's even okay. if people, and that's what's hard with that's normal. And what's hard about Facebook is that like oh, I hate Facebook. shiny and perfect, right? It's like oh. everybody puts their best face forward on on Facebook, you know. To me, and Facebook it's like, that's is, why, that's, is the empire. It's Darth Vader and the stormtroopers. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, and that's why, like for me, I'm like, well, I'm bringing realness to Facebook because I'm like, people aren't Which talking about this. And this is not, this is, that's not real. Like that is not right. real that, you know, it always, everyone wakes up and it's a great day. Like sometimes it's not a great day. Sometimes things are hard and some things yeah. are frustrating. And then sometimes you lose your patience. And then it's like, you know, how they always talk about like, it's not who you are when you're winning. It's who you are when you lose. Yeah. Like that's the test of a true character. And so it's like, yeah. we all have tough days. And, and who are you when that happens? And that's where that growth, you know, Mm -hmm. um, should happen, you know, and I talk to my students a lot and my, my, uh, trainers, I mentor and, you know, my, uh, almost 800 people in the Academy. It's like, have a Grand Prix mindset. Like what's your Grand Prix mindset, you know? And then it goes into like, it's all about growth and it's all about, um, self-awareness and, and kindness towards yourself and then kindness towards others, you know, and, Mm -hmm. um, to be brave and say, when people ask you how you are, you know, be like, you know what? I'm having a difficult time. Yep. I I mean, I I need some compassion right now. Today sucks. (laughs) I've learned. (laughs) I'm having a hard time. Lay it out. (laughs) Don't sugarcoat it. And that's a release in and of itself to be honest about it. Yeah. Having a, Exactly. Exactly. I had one Wednesday, um, over the summer where I don't feel sorry for myself very often, but I was having a day and I was looking at, um, some pictures that I was in my office at the barn and I was going to go live on Facebook at seven o'clock on my team TV. And I'm, I was in my office and I'm just, I was overwhelmed. I was talking a lot with the doctors and I didn't know if I should do radiation. Like I had, like they let me make these decisions, which was like amazing. Like, yay. Thank you. You're not driving and making the decisions for me. So that's good that like my diagnosis was not like, no matter what you got to do a double mastectomy, chemo, radiation, blah, blah, blah. You know, it was like, you definitely need you know, and I decided also to go ahead to do the double mastectomy. And then I, um, got to choose about the chemo and choose about the radiation. And that's like, I'm like, based on what experience I've never had cancer before and hopefully never again, but like, I don't know. So I was in this like real state of anxiety and I didn't know. And I'm sitting at my desk thinking about what am I going to talk about in my mind about it Wednesday night when I'm like, sobbing in my tack room, you know, or in my oh, JJ. and I'm, and I'm looking at, um, this picture and, uh, my dear friends, Allie Brock and Casey Perry glass. And I through the Brook USA, which is a nonprofit, uh-huh. um, 501 C three amazing charity that we help, uh, third world countries, uh, with donkeys, horses, and mules. And we like support them. So they, um, can support the people. And it's like, this amazing. It's the Brook USA is amazing. So anyway, we went to Guatemala and we, we did like a, uh, we did a trip and I'm looking at this picture and I'm like, Oh, you know, Allie just had her baby and Casey's going to have her baby soon. And I have cancer. I'm like, WTF, you know what I mean? And then it was like, yep. it was not my path to have a 
kids this lifetime. And I don't regret that, you know, at all. But I was like, and I have cancer. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I wanted to go to the Olympics and I got cancer, you know, and it was like right in that time where like the unknown was like freaking me out. And, you know, I, I said um, to my Facebook group, I'm like, you know, guys, uh, and there's like, I don't know, maybe like 7,000 people in there or whatever. And I was like, I can't go on tonight. I'm not okay. <laughs> and I'm Good like, and you, you know what? It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. You know, and so then the next night, you know, um, and I cried it out and I felt a lot better because the release is important. Yeah. And so then the next night, you know, the conversation became, hey, let's talk about not being okay and how you, how you need to deal with oh, that. Oh, that's you know? what and a it's gift. okay to feel that what? way, yeah. you know, and it's, it's part of life. Yes, it is. So, so JJ, before we go, you are involved this year in the Challenge of the Americas in more than one way. You're doing a pas de deux. Um, yep. and you're in a quadrille and what, what for our listeners challenge of the Americas is the one big thing the dressage community does in Wellington once a year to benefit breast cancer research. And it, in my opinion, it's the best night of the whole season <laughs> because it it's, is pretty it, epic. It it's pretty yeah, epic. it's, it's so much fun. And the quadrilles are so different from, you know, watching a regular Grand Prix test or Grand Prix freestyle or a special. And everybody is just really up for it. And everybody really is behind breast cancer research. So, I mean, how are you feeling about this? Being well, such a I really major did, part of it I, this year. Yeah. I mean, and it, it was funny because it was always something that like, you know, Mary Ross always calls and asks me if I have a horse and uh, I think I've ridden in it maybe three other times. Um, and it's always been a blast and it's been a fun evening. And uh, we used to do it over at the IPC and uh, yeah. International Polo Club. And now we do it over at Global, which is amazing that the dressage um, community is really like grabbed onto it. Like it's amazing. Uh and, you know, it's always been like a, a, just amazing night. You know, everyone's in costume and it's exciting. And they're like horses that aren't used to going on the lights. Cause, you know, <laughs> every Friday night under the lights, kind of the same people, right? So you kind yep. of like, you know, it's like not that interesting, you know, after a while. And um, this year, uh, it's really special because not only am I on Team Biostar. Yay! Is, yay! It's the best team. We're going to win. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Um, not only, you know, is that a blast to uh, be on a team, but also I'm doing a pot de with Shannon Duick because um, I just had this like great idea because I relied on Shannon a lot during my diagnosis. And like, you're just, there's just so much unknown. So she's, just, like, she's freaking a breast out. cancer survivor too. Exactly. And she also did a double mastectomy and was competing very soon after. And like, she's amazing. Right. So I'm like, okay, I would like my experience to be like that. Um, Lisa Von Martels was also um, an amazing Mm -hmm. support for me. Um, Helen Sandvin, incredible, incredible women who like behind the scenes really came uh, and, and reached out and then became like pillars of confidants for me and Mm -hmm. and huge inspiration for me and so i was uh, thinking about the the challenge of the americas this year and i said shannon i think we should do a party do you know and we have like amazing music and everyone's gonna laugh and cry and cheer and it's gonna be a great way to open the night yeah and then of course all the top grand prix riders are on the team um and so where in the world is there ever like multiple Grand Prix freestyles with quadrilles of like six Grand Prix horses with six good Grand Prix riders. And five teams. That's 30 Grand Prix. Five teams. That's amazing. And it's amazing. It's pretty cool. You know, this whole organization of this play for pink, um, all the proceeds go to the breast cancer research foundation, which I will tell you, I mean, the research saved my life. It not only saved my life, it has saved thousands of people's lives because 
breast cancer is a totally different experience than it was even five years ago, which is not that long ago. And, you know, we have to keep, again, like that commitment and that um, sharp focus on raising the money for the research so that in another five years, it's another different total different experience for the next person who will get, you know, one out of eight women get diagnosed with breast cancer. Yikes. So, and, and men too, there's a small amount of men, but I mean, your, your mother, your sister, you know, we're, we're yeah. going to ride to, um, Melissa Etheridge's, uh, song. I love that. I, song. I, I, I run for life. Yeah. So it is like, I, I run for your mother, your sister, your daughter, your wife. And it's just like, because it is kind of like epidemic proportion of breast mm-hmm. cancer. The amazing thing is like this early detection is, is life saving, you know, but then it also like the experience I had because of this research, it was like, they started to talk about, well, your cancer, like my personal specific cancer, which doesn't is amazing. Respond to the chem- right. Like, like it becomes this very personalized, you know, after surgery, you get your tumor sent off. You get something called an oncotype. They test what are the chances of this this particular cancer that came out of your body. What is the particulars of that? Where and when? What are the chances it's going to come back? What is the chances it's going to come back metastatically? What are the chances, you know? And then you get to figure out, do I need chemo? Do I need, you know, um, ovary suppression? Do I need... Um, just radiation, you know, and you get this very specific personal to you um, recipe, you know, for, for success. And, you know, it's important to always stand up for yourself and recognize your worth and ask the hard questions and talk to your doctors. And if you don't like your doctor, get a different doctor, Mm -hmm. you know, like really stand up for yourself. And again, like have that self-respect and self-love to care for you because you're the only one you really got, you know, when you go deep into those dark spots to heal yourself and come out of a big surgery, I mean, it's you and yourself and that's it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, of course, you know, we all get by with a little help from our friends, you know, I mean, I have a wonderful, amazing support network too, but that's what's so beautiful about the challenge of the Americas, like the whole sport, you know, really comes together yeah. um, because it it affects it affects so many people. So we're really excited. I'm just honored to be on your team, Tigger. Oh, and uh, it's just going to be. I am like so, so happy to have you be so on Team Biostorm so because your story it just so inspire. I'm sorry, you have to have the story, but it so has inspired me in so many profound ways that I I can't almost verbalize, but, um, you, you have brought me personally a lot of, um, awareness and I, I'm really grateful. Thank you. What a cool, cool conversation with JJ. She just bubbles over. I kind of got goosebumps here and there. I, I I love talking to JJ because she can talk on so many different levels, but so honestly. Yeah, I love I loved her phrase, irritatingly positive. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. And s- such I loved hearing about her experience early on in her diagnosis of kind of hitting bottom a little bit and Mm -hmm. feeling like I just cannot continue. I cannot continue. And being very upfront about that with people who basically are a lot of perfect strangers. Yes. They're, it's a community, but they're not people that you genuinely know. And it's hard enough to share that kind of thing with people, you know, well, much less with the world at large. And, and there aren't very many people in the universe that, are able to trust humanity that much. <laughs> I, I, after that conversation, I, I sat back and said, gosh, I got to do better. <laughs> I, I just felt I was so inspired to, you know, go back through my steamer trunk um, and keep 
pulling out what no longer serves me. Yes. You know, the resentments, the the negative thoughts, the beating up on myself, ourselves. And yes, and and to I like I like your method of my ceremony. Your ceremony. I like your ceremony. I have to record that separately with you sometime and I want to put it over on horse tip daily. Because oh, okay. It genuinely is a useful, valid <laughs> tool for yeah, so many is. things in your life. And yep. and it 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 really resonated with me. One of my favorite TV shows to watch is it's all in reruns now. Well, mostly in reruns. A thing on on British television called Time Team. And I've never heard of it. It's archaeology. They would they take their little team oh, out wow. and they have three days to evaluate a given site. And they do whatever they can. And it's always an evaluation process because an ar- a proper archaeological dig takes years and if not decades. But they do evaluations. They'll go to a site and then they say the aerial photograph indicates that this probably has a Roman fort. So they apply all these different scientific techniques and they dig some trenches and they decide, okay, uh, yes, it's probably a fort and yes, it was occupied during the third century, that kind of thing. But anyhow, whenever they do prehistoric sites, they talk a lot about the ceremonies that they believe were involved in life in prehistory, like the Bronze Age mm-hmm. and the Iron Age. And I, I use the word think because on purpose because we really don't have proof. We're applying our 20th century point of view to yeah. the clues and archaeologies we find. So we don't know for sure. But the, it made me think of that. It, it made me think about how that process of cleansing yourself of something, something or honoring something by burning and creating new life from it, mm-hmm. if you plant a tree, that's as old as humans. Yeah. From my point of view. So I just yep. got goosebumps again. So thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> You're welcome. And it's so easy to do. Perfect. The easy part is the fire. The hard part is getting the shit out of your steamer baggage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do I really want to get rid of that? I've been hanging on to that for quite a while. Yeah, that was there it. you go. <laughs> 